Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 42 where you email me your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net and if I don't read them on Strange World, I will read them here. So let's get right to it, shall we? First email is called Flat Earth Clues Director's Cut Video. Hi Mark, would have called but hate answering machines, which I figured it would go to, so decided to email you. For some reason, I came across your video this morning, and since your voice sounds pretty darn aligned with yourself, I watched the whole thing. Very interesting about the Flat Earth and Antarctica, but when you came to your last conclusion, I was honestly taken aback that it was proof of God. I'd say according to the text, it would show proof of gods, plural. My first question is, have you looked at or studied any Gnostic text? No, no, I'm not. Uh, not that I'm an expert in any way, mind you, but I would have expected a wild, wild different conclusion had you. Here is what conclusion I thought after watching your video based on my personal studies. The gods, and I'm not speaking of good gods, but here's the ones Jesus warned us about that created this flat earth and domed us in for their own greedy purposes and made sure there was a resource area, otherwise known as Antarctica, for when the powers that be are able to wipe out the lower class civilization to have for elites and higher class civilization to start the new world order. That's it in a nutshell. I was just very curious and love curious minds as I sense you are. I guess you can say I'm an isolated student of interesting things. Thank you, Denise Rowland. P.S. Isolated in the sense that I'm on the wrong side of the state, apparently. Most people and things of interest to me at least are along the coast from Southern California up to British Columbia. I'm over in the Spokane Valley. Completely understand. All right, this next one's called Flat Earth? Question mark? Hi Mark, I live 122 miles from the Bonneville Salt Flats in northwestern Utah, USA. I would like to invite you to visit the Salt Flats with me for the definitive proof that the Earth is a globe. There are two places that you can observe the curvature of the Earth. One you can see in the daytime and the other is a spectacular view at night. Show up in Salt Lake City and I will put you up for the night and drive you to the Salt Flats. I'm available most of the time, just give me a heads up on your arrival. Best regards, Jim Keeler. Um, I don't think he's a flat earther, and honestly, the any flats like the Bonneville Salt Flats, all the Solar, the Solar del, del, del Uni is pretty convincing in my opinion because it actually gets rain on it, and so you get a half inch of perfectly, perfectly still standing water that doesn't pool up on either end. But when it comes to the Salt Flats, even if you want to show me something there, uh, mainstream science is going to come back at you at the same, at the same place that they do the flat earthers, which is they'll just say, well, it's a pool table on top of a globe. That's what their argument is, which is why everybody does it across water if they can. Of course, the, the, the perfect situ situation, the perfect conditions would be ice, a long, long field of lake ice. That would be the perfect conditions. And I know it's not very fun to go out on lake ice or go anywhere near lake ice because it's super, super cold. Uh, but that would be the one to do it because it would minimize all the atmospheric effects, including the Fata Morgana, F-A-T-A space M-O-R-G-A-N-A. -A. Check that out if you get a chance. But thank you for the invitation out to the Salt Flats. Not the first one I've had, by the way. This one's called, okay, it's flat. Hey, Mark, I was the caller from Oklahoma City on the Tuesday call that suggested we do a live telescope shot at the conference. I have a 10 inch Mead 200 with Wi-Fi and camera ability. I got the thing to prove flat earths myself with a 10 mile view across the lake here in Oklahoma, which worked. I'm not a professional and would need help from others. I'm pretty sure we could send a live link with the internet, question mark. I was looking at a Wright Brothers Memorial over on the coast and had a couple of locations on the other side of the huge lake. One was 40 miles and the other was closer. And then he sends me a picture of his Oklahoma, it's flat license plate to I-T-S-F-L-A-T because most states will give you seven letters. Some will give you six, some will give you eight, but most will give you seven. And then he goes, uh, let's see. Oh, he has a quote from Winston Churchill. Germany's unforgivable crime before the Second World War was her attempt to extricate her economic power from the world's trading system and to create her own exchange mechanism which would deny world finance, otherwise known as the central banks, its opportunity to profit. Oh, I'd never heard that. That's excellent. And I'm sorry again, it's taking me so long to get to these emails. I've been making a lot of videos lately. 
so I haven't done as many Q and A's as I, I'm, I'm going to try to power through these though. And, uh, and unfortunately I'm going to be more discriminating with the emails. If it's stuff I've read before a lot, I probably won't read it on the thing. So just give you guys a heads up. This one's called help. That's all there is in the title help. My name is David Brown. I've been a flat earther for a long time as I questioned everything from a young age and I was encouraged by my parents. Things did not make sense to me per a globe model from a young age. My father is a decorated retired Major General U.S. Air Force fighter pilot. When I was young, I am 42 now, I saw all of the Air Force designed space fighter planes of the future as described in presentations from Air Force personnel and was hooked on the future of going into and using space. None of it obviously came to be. I always questioned that. My father, who is now 78 years old, has always encouraged me to think for myself. He is not on board with my notions of a flat earth though. He is too old to give a shit and reevaluate his views at this time. At any rate, I am emailing you because I need help. I want some ideas on how to even talk about the subject of a flat earth without alienating myself to crazy conspiracy tinfoil hat land. I have a nephew who is a great kid, but his parents in Catholic school have him drinking the Kool-Aid and loving and needing it. I always appreciate how you end your flat earth clues with a phone number. I'm going to call and bother you, not just now out of respect because it is 1130 at night. If you get this email, shoot back something. Everything I have researched and looked into makes me really want to talk to you. I believe we are similar in the fact that I went down every conspiracy rabbit hole that you probably did and took the red pill more than once. Like you, I believe this flat earth thing is close to the end to end all to be all. Thank you for your time. If you read this entirely, hopefully coherent email, I will leave my number, although I do not expect you to call and also agree with you that texting sucks and I also have little use for it. I will call your number if this is if it is valid and hope to actually talk to you as I despise texting probably as much as you do. Side note, my sister actually called my brother to get my number. It changed to text me happy birthday. How messed up is that? No, I don't have a good relationship with her. And he gives his phone number. Thanks, David Brown. You know what? I'm going to call David. He wrote a nice email. And that's going to go into my call list. So thank you for that. We will be in touch. This one's called Spreading Flat Earth. Hey, guy. Oh, and he sent this to myself and IPS. Hey, guys. So I ordered a Pizza Hut and gave my name as Flat Earth. It is on the screen for people to see. I need to do that for Domino's as well. I wrote Flat Earth on my reusable Starbucks cup for when I go into the store. I changed my name on my profile with Starbucks to Flat Earth. So when I do mobile orders, that is what prints out. I cut back my Starbucks from one a day to only three or four a week. <laughs> You're getting there. But still, I think it is spreading awareness. I think mainly people ignore it or not even aware. I've had a few quick conversations to plant the seed, and I have definitely triggered a few serious globy baristas. Cheers, Mock. Mac? Mock. M-A-K. I'm going to call him Mock. Thank you, Mock. Awesome. This one is called Denver Footage Mark Shoutout and Stream. Hey man, thanks again. Here's some quick footage. I know it's bad. We had a professional camera that he's talking about the Denver meetup. Professional camera there. I'll email you that footage tomorrow. Much better. 10 minutes of us voting on solid questions to ask the public. We had a great time and formed a group that will be meeting in Denver once or even twice a month. I've been emailing Ace, Bob, and ODD to coordinate, but so far only Ace has got back to me. I'm just one guy. I've been putting in my own time and money. We all need to support each other, so I thank you, Mark. Also, Tim Osmond showed up, otherwise known as Jason Hornsbury. Hornsbury? Was that the? Hornsby was, I think, the, the what we called him initially. I don't know what he is now. We'll figure it out eventually. And then summarily kill him. Is just a random looks nothing like Tim. We all got that on high def tape too. Tip of the big thank you, Mark. Shout out and in the link. 24-7 stream promoting FE and your content with a link to your channel and your name and title. I want newbies to see your info clues. They woke me up a long time ago. Hope this is okay. And he did. I don't know if he's still doing it, but it was thanks. It was nice that he did for as long as he did. So that's fantastic. Thank you very much. That's from Critical Thinking Always. What's his channel? This one's called literally you, the, the, the letter U, da, da, man. You, da, man. Two exclamation points. Dear Mark, just wanted to know I appreciate you very much. 
I have watched virtually all of your videos and consider them highly informative, professional, and entertaining. I've been a flat earther for about six months, first hearing about it from Dave Murphy, then Eric Dubay, and then you. I especially enjoy the shows that you and Patricia put on together and the way you two take the high road when responding to criticism. I watched President Trump mocks Democrats, a video from one day ago on YouTube, and at three minutes in, he talks about how the government is going to change the airports and airplanes flying the wrong way. Interesting. Which will save us a lot of money? I found that interesting. Thank you and keep up the grand work, Strata Jumper. That's awesome. Thanks, Strata Jumper. This one's called Admiral Bird, Fly on the Mirror. Mark, what happens when you take a piece of black paper and put it behind a piece of glass? That's how mirrors are made, and that's what we get. If the dome is in a molten looking glass and Mr. Sun is behind us within the dome and the blackness of no sun on the other side of the dome, what effect is produced? I would love to have been there when Admiral Byrd exclaimed, there's undiscovered land over there. Sir, that's not new land. You're looking at Africa in the mirror. Thoughts? Ken, retired military. Hmm. That is interesting. And again, very possible. I don't know if it's going to be low, as low tech as that, though. You got to remember, with, with a structure like the firmament slash dome slash whatever else you want to call it, it's going to have some properties we haven't even thought of yet. Remember, we, we've only been programming for, what, 20 years, roughly? So, I mean, good programming, solid programming. Uh, let's see here, Flat Earth Encounter. That's what this one's called. Hello, Mark. Yes, you can read my name on the air. Uh, okay, well, I've got to get your name first, though. Now, here's my little tale. I was sitting on my front porch on Father's Day, watching the rain fall and enjoying an IPA, when suddenly the rain started to pour from the sky. A biker pulled his motorcycle off the road to rest beneath a large maple tree on the edge of my yard. The tree didn't provide very good shelter, and the poor guy was getting soaked. I caught his eye and motioned him for come up to come up on the porch. You know, this slightly reads like a, like a penthouse letter, just to let you know. He gladly came on up and thanked me for letting him get out of the rain. Still is, by the way. I said, no problem. I couldn't stand to see you like that. Anywho, small talk ensued, and after I started to wane, after it started to wane, I thought to myself, now is my chance, and took a deep breath. Again, still sounds like a penthouse letter. <laughs> and said, you seem like a nice guy and a reasonable fellow, and we're cool here, so I want to ask you a question. Do you know that the earth is flat? He didn't skip a beat and said, yes. We had a rousing talk about the fake moon landings and other such lies. He had learned about the flat earth four weeks ago. I've known since, I've known since 2015, and we were both so happy to finally meet another flat earther in such a rural area. We both lived near a large military base, but about 40 minutes apart. The really crazy part was that he told me he had gone skydiving and did not see any curvature. Boom. In the end, the rain subsided and he could go home. My mind was blown. I guess the moral of the story is, don't be afraid to bring up this topic in conversation. You never know what the other person might think. On a side note, I will be attending a street block party in Watertown, New York on June 30th from 5 to 10 p.m. I will have a booth and we'll be doing interviews and passing out information and bring a TV for showing videos. The fun part is the party has a theme, Alice in Wonderland. I figured it would be a perfect time to talk to folks about what's down the rabbit hole. I think the media will probably be there. It's the first party of three that are planned and we have a local TV station and a newspaper with a good size circulation. My hubby will be filming the event, or at least parts of it, and we will upload it to you. My channel is called Hard Candy Mittens. Again, penthouse letter. She, she could write these. Thanks for the inspiration. We love your shows and keep it flat. Peace and love, the mitten lady, Charlotte Besaw. That's B-E-S-A-W. And I'm sorry that I actually, it actually took me so long to get to this. Oh, yeah, by the way, she has an Etsy shop. She has, um, uh, and on Etsy.com, she has hand hand oh, I'm sorry hand candy hand candy mittens still hard candy hand candy hand candy mittens slash shop on Etsy so you guys can check that out when you get a chance this one's called I have an off-topic question Mark good afternoon my husband is a subscriber of yours and a big fan he reached out to you once about the flat earth subject Sean Yale 
In a recent conversation about our son, Richard, he's 18 and, a mo and has mild cerebral palsy and is to start college in the fall, an avid gamer, I thought becoming a type of video gamer tester may be a career option. Sean mentioned he thought you were a video game tester at one point. My question is, how would someone go about testing games as a job? This day and age, I'm pretty sure many young people want that type of job, but his choices are a bit limited due to his handicap. I guess I'm grasping at straws in hopes you can at least give us a bit of advice on where to start. Uh, if I am in any way out of line or bothering you, my sincere apologies. I'm a mom trying to get my son some my son some independence. Thanks for your time. Keep posting the great informative videos, Kimberly Anderson Yale, and yeah, I will I will send her some advice on on that. But honestly, you know, I was testing games back in the olden days. I mean, back in the mid '90s was when I was testing, and that's it's a way, it's so much different than it was now because there weren't a lot of us that were testing. There were developers, there were people who were doing marketing, and box design, and music, and graphics, and all this other fun stuff. But not as many as you might think were playing. I mean, yeah, there were companies dedicated to playing, like ID. ID was the one of the big ones. Bungie, I think, it was one of, one of them as well. Of course, I knew the Bungie guys back when they were doing um, only Mac titles. Uh, their their big one they they the, the preface to Halo Halo was the project they ne could never finish was uh, but the 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 first their big hit was in Mac Macintosh was called Marathon so anyway but I digress this one's called Under the Dome YouTube channel hi Mark hope your day is going well I watched your video on YouTube and have to say I'm interested I've been so curious about Antarctica for years I'm currently a student majoring in geosciences can you suggest any other sites for valid information I'd really like to learn more about the topic. Thanks again for your video. It's very well articulated to the point that it doesn't come across as pseudoscience. Any recommendations would be appreciated. Thanks, Mark. Jamie Ginsbach out of Los Angeles, California. And yeah, uh, I sent that person and uh, anyone else that wants it. I, really, if you want to, to, to get into it, if you're just getting into it now, or you have something that's going to get into it, set, all you have to do is type in YouTube, the Flat Earth short list for new people it'll take you to a playlist that i made it's about 24 25 long and it will cover everything you need to know and it's not my videos it's 90 i think i i may have one video with it maybe more but it's mostly other people other people that have made great introductory videos to the flat earth theory so this one is called flat earth in lost hey mark I'm a short-term listener, albeit I have enjoyed listening to all of your content, including the Flat Earth Clues, since January of this year. I've started to see a trend or mot motif, motif of your style of videos you make, pulling metaphorical content out of shows, movies, TV, radio, etc. I just finished the Lost series. You know, I've never watched it. Everybody says, oh, you should watch Lost. And I just, yeah, it's network television. I just don't really watch network series anymore. It's got to be, you know, something from uh, HBO or Showtime or Stars or Cin Cinemax. I've watched pretty much all the major series on those places. Anyway, he finished his Lost and noticed a little bit that in the Lost episode from season six, Across the Sea, you may have already had this mentioned to you, but I figured I'd try to give you another example from TV where the authorities that be uh, convince us that we are alone and there's nothing left to look for. If you've already taken this one apart, I appreciate it. I just saw a lot of flat earth symbolism in this episode. In case you haven't already been told about this one, cheers. I'm sure that you can see what I saw with this one as well. Keep up your the good work. Keeping it flat. Thanks, Timmy J from Oklahoma City. And he's talking about Lost Season 6 episode called Across the Sea. So yeah, I'll check that out when I have time. And I don't have as much time as I used to. This one's called Nothing. There's no subject in here at all. Mark, I cannot thank you enough for opening my eyes. My brother showed me your videos. We appreciate what you're doing, man. Russ, res much respect from Minnesota. Adam. Short and sweet. Thank you, Adam. It's great. This one's called Flat Earth? Question mark. Hello, Mark. I hope I jotted down your email address correctly. And you actually are who I am trying to reach. My name is Christine. And about five days ago, by a fluke, I was introduced to the Flat Earth Theory or what I am starting to see as the Flat Earth Truth. I have been trying to share countless videos with my family, but they laugh at me or think I am crazy. Even my children, my son, 12, actually got annoyed with me when I told him, okay, even if it's not flat, you have to open your mind to the possibility that we have been lied to by our government. I am interested and intrigued to now learn and absorb as much information as I can that will help not only myself, but my family grasp the truth and erase the brainwashing on our brains from birth to now. If you have a mailing list, 
in which you periodically send out information or even links to further information, I would love to be on that list. Thank you so much for your time and the time and research you have put forth to show how the government lies, hides truths, brainwashes, and is actually again for us to find the truth. I know for certain and have always known that God is the creator, and I also knew that the government, evil, has and will do anything to keep us from knowing about God, and I am not certain what your belief is in regards to God, but that's not why I wrote you anyways. For me, this is has been an eye-opening last couple of days, and right now I'm still in a bit of shock, but at the same time, I'm in an aha type state where it all makes sense. Also would like information, if any is out there, of any flat earth groups close to where I live. Again, thank you much for your time, and I look forward to your reply. Thank you, Christine Dutra. And I don't know where Christine is, so I'm gonna have to put that in the respond pile. And say, you know, when you say, hey, is there any groups? I don't, I don't know where you are. You gotta tell me where you are. Unless she said it in the email and I missed it. I don't think I did though. This one's called Space Station. Hello, Mark. I'm a huge fan. I follow yourself and Patricia Steer on every episode. You out, out. You out, out. I read this verbatim, guys. You gotta, if you're gonna spell check it, that's fine. You might wanna read it through, though. I'm a closet flat earther, to be honest. Recently, my faith floundered. A new neighbor moved in next door, an astronomy buff with a higher power telescope. I saw the ISS with my own eyes through the scope. How is this possible? I saw the solar panels attached to it. A reference to the detail I've seen. Please help. All right. I, you've seen something up there. No question. The question, the question for you is, are there people up there? Not a chance. Not a chance. But no, I think there's stuff up there. I think there's things posing as satellites up there. And there could be something that's flying around that looks like the ISS. There's no people on it, though. That's my response to you. This one's called They Are Hiding God. Mark, you video woke me up this morning. I must have left it on autoplay. I woke up because finally something was making sense. I'm re-enlisting. Re-enlisting what? I was plagiarized at Yale and Harvard. I'm on Facebook as Silver Rain Running Cloud. Twitter is S Running Cloud. I am not comfortable calling people on the phone, but I would like to talk to you. Would you call me when you have time to talk? Thank you for your time, Silver Rain Running Cloud. He's a master tech at Crystal Data Systems. And that's it. So I will try to get back to the person if I get a chance. This one's called Curvature Mentioned on Newscast. Hi, Mark. F FYI, Google, Canadian sniper hits... Oh, yeah, I remember that story. Canadian sniper hits ISIS militant with record-breaking shot at a, a minute 56. The curvature of the Earth is mentioned. <laughs> nice. Yeah, not a chance. Yeah, I suppose they hit him at like two miles with, what, a 50 cal? Yeah. Whatever. Curvature of the Earth. This one's called Questions. Mark, I'm huge in conspiracy theories and recently have been checking out the Flat Earth Theory. You by far explain it the best and have the most compelling argument. Your one video talks about an impenetrable dome that even nuclear weapons can't penetrate. My question is how do falling stars go through it or how do we send a rover to Mars through it? <laughs> also, are the sun, moon, and stars under it or just the sun and moon? If you can reply, I'd appreciate it. Thanks. Yeah, standard questions. You know, stars don't fall through it. I think they're just part of the system. We didn't send anything to Mars and the sun, moon, and the stars, I think, are inside with us. I think it's part of just a giant planetarium slash terrarium slash snow globe slash Hollywood backlot slash Petri dish, whatever you want to call it. Pick one. This one's called Boston Common Meetup. Went great. Mark, today was incredible and we made a new Google account, fenewengland at gmail.com. All who were there had access to the password and we can all collectively upload and share and set up meetups today was more than amazing. I get to meet real flat earthers. Jibby Jedi recorded a lot and I'm sure he's making the vid for it. I'm so freaking excited and I can't wait for the next ones. That's from Space is Fake. Thank you, Space is Fake. That's great. And as right now, I'm still more than a month behind in emails. I'm so sorry, guys. This one's called Phoenix Meetup. was amazing last night. This is the Phoenix Meetup. Thanks in no small part to the two of you. He, oh, he sent this email to myself and Patricia. We had 22 enthusiastic flatties on hand last night, enthusing about all manner of things. College students taking notes, a former Air Force pilot, several mothers with young ones discussing how to negotiate the treacherous indoctrination system called school. It was downright nourishing to get all meat 
to get to all meet each other and come out of the isolation of our blinking cyber phosphors. Picture of the last group below and a shot of Jake and me from our last meetup a few weeks ago. And that's from Glenn. That's awesome. That's from Glenn Bordeaux. And uh, if you want to get a hold of him, I'll give you his email real quick. His email is gbardo at yahoo.com. gbardo at yahoo.com. Great. Thanks, Len. Okay, this one's called Flat and Square Earth. Mark, Revelation 7.1. Talk about the four corners of the, of the earth. How can it be round and have four corners? The government is lying to us. The moon landing was staged. If you watch it on YouTube, you will see all the shadows are not going in the same directions. And the flag was flying like it does naturally in Earth's atmosphere. There is nothing proving all the oil and oil, gold and coal the expedition said existed, existed on or in Antarctica. It's all lies to deceive the public and keep them in darkness. I believe the Bible over it anything the government or anyone else says. Watch the Twin Towers on YouTube and you'll conclude there were explosives that brought down the towers and not the planes that hit them. Even firefighters said there were explosives in the building. Compare that with other building and explosive charges set to bring them down straight down. A reporter was talking to someone at turned said it was happening as if she knew it was going to happen. Genesis 7.24 says the waters was upon the earth for 150 days. If the earth was round, it couldn't have held water because it would have run right off. I thank God for the Bible because it is the guide to the truth. Even Donald Trump says the earth is flat. After all his flying across the globe, he concluded that the earth is being flat. I, that article, I, I can't confirm that article, actually. That is why people don't want him for president because he call it like he sees it instead of trying to be politically correct and pleasing the people. Jesus is my savior and Trump is my president. Wow, that's an interesting combination. And he is doing God's will as we all are because everything God has made is his servant. Thanks, Richard. Uh, I don't know if I'd start tying Trump and Jesus. I mean, yeah, he won, but eh, this is me. This one's called Flat Earth. Mr. Sergeant, who are you that you, you could make such a professional video documentary about the Flat Earth? I thoroughly enjoyed watching it and would like to know more. Is there something beyond the dome? How are the moon and Mars landing explained? How, well, everyone ties those two almost directly together. How are the galaxies and all we know about the universe explained? I don't expect you to have all the answers, but it sure would be nice if somebody did. And that's from Pat Alfano. I get that sort of email all the time, and I can only read a few of them. This one's called Flat Earth. Mark, wow, your videos are amazing. I only came to watch after I stumbled across an article talking about the Earth being flat on your website. I was just curious and didn't even think any of it was true. I ended up watching all of them. My whole life, I've known things aren't as they appear, and this all makes complete and total sense. I just feel like my whole life has changed now for the better. I always enjoy, I'm sorry, I've always struggled with the concept of God, but this affirms it. I guess not in the way I expected, but my mind is still blown for the better. Thank you so much. Your work is greatly appreciated. Erica Rose. Thanks, Erica. This one's called Eclipse. And this guy wrote this back in June 26. This is a month ago. I'm drinking Tang, by the way. It's astronaut food. This one's called Eclipse. Any thoughts on the eclipse in August? Photo opportunity. And the, the quote of the day from him is, Age is relative. Only your relatives should know your age. And that's from Rick Mayer. And I'm sorry, REM wrote that, but but he, the guy that sent the emails, Rick Mayer. It, it's, yeah, I, in fact, I've got a whole bunch of things on the eclipse now. I've been cranking out videos as fast as I can because the eclipse is coming up August 21st, 2017. And it is going to be a doozy because one, it's in the summer. Two, it's only going to be visible in the United States. And three, it's literally cutting a diagonal swath from the northwest to the southeast through the country. So it is going to be plenty of photo opportunities for people. And it raises a lot of questions about the moon. You know, the, how, what, the, the path that it's cutting through. Why is it going from west to east? Two, why is the path so small? Uh, th three, you know, why, why, the, why the rotation of the earth is, is, um, is locked in perfectly with the rotation of the moons. So we only see one side of it. And why is the moon exactly, again, coincidental, of course, uh, why is the moon 400 times narrower than the sun, but yet it's 400 times closer than the sun, so it fits exactly in front of it? Amazing things, all sorts of questions that'll help, that just help the community. So, this one's called 
What's it called? Please help. Thanks. Dear Mark, can you please take a look at something and give me your feedback? I've been looking for about a year at many evidences that seem to prove the Earth is flat, and I think I'm convinced, but a friend of mine took some pictures, it's the attachment of the Toronto skyline from across the lake, and it seems to prove the point that he was trying to convince of me, the curvature, with the Rogers Center being apparently below the horizon. No. And then I came across a video on YouTube of the Toronto skyline, link below, also from across the lake, showing the Rogers Center being above the skyline. But the video shows the Rogers Center being rectangular when it's actually dome-shaped. So you're talking about atmospheric lensing. Look up Rob Skiba, atmospheric lensing. You'll you'll it'd be blow your mind. So these two opposite things, video and attached photos, have me a bit confused. And I thought you might have more of a professional eye and maybe see something that I am not seeing. Really appreciate your feedback or advice. I'd like to debunk the attached photos. Here's the link to the video. Blah blah blah. And that's from Scott Wood, in Ontario. Thank you for that, Scott. And uh, hopefully you're listening. I will try to send a thing to you. Hopefully you looked at Rob Skiba's atmospheric lensing or the, the brand new thing that's out, which is Fata Morgana. F-A-T-A space M-O-R-G-A-N-A. -A. Very interesting. This one's called I Was On Your Show, Antarctic Flight. Hi, Mark. My name's Mitchell from Australia. I call in regularly and will again tonight. Qantas Airlines here in Australia runs flights from various places to Antarctica and back for the general public. While this is not too exciting as it doesn't land and only spends four hours over Antarctica, I have found very interesting flight on New Year's Eve, which claims to be over Antarctica at night for the midnight sun. The flight also travels over the so-called South Magnetic Pole. So I want to go on the flight and video the entire 12-hour journey with a compass to prove if the magnetic north will move after going past the magnetic south and to prove or disprove the midnight sun in the south. I have set up a GoFundMe account to raise money for the trip. It's called Flat Earth, excuse me, Antarctic Flight. Link below. GoFundMe Flat Earth Antarctic Flight. Could you contact IPS to put in into the Flat Earth Consortium, please? Thank, thanks, Mitchell, your friend from Australia. Thank you, Mitchell. Hopefully he knows uh, about this already by now. And I'm sorry it took me so long to read your email. And I've been I've been super, super busy. I'm still working on, oh, where are we on? June 27th. Trying to catch up. Swear to God. This one's called Colorful Dancing Stars. Hi, Mark. I became a flat earther, a.k.a. Domer, two weeks ago. And I thought I was awake to the big conspiracies. I've been a fixed earth geocentrist for years. I've been watching flat earth videos on YouTube. How did Shaz... Shazwar Bukti get the video of the gorgeous dancing colorful stars I would like to see this for myself and want to know what I need I just discovered your show on Truth Frequency Radio good show thank you Suzette I do not know anything about Shazwar Bukti Bugti Bukti whatever it is B-U-G-T-I I don't know anything about that one hopefully somebody can help her out if you guys want to know anything about it, you want to help her out email her at Suzette S-U-Z-E-T-T-E -T -T -E dot Bates, B-A-T-E-S, at iCloud.com. This one's called Flat Earth. Mark, hi, I'm watching one of your videos and thought I must tell you that I'm from Australia and have flown from Sydney to Los Angeles direct. It took 12 hours there and 15 back due to headwinds and a different plane and we flew over Hawaii. So we went east from Sydney to LA direct. Also, your idea about volcanoes is, boy, I'm sorry, volcanoes. I've never pronounced it like that in my life. Volcanoes. It's bordering on insanity. Volcanoes have been erupting for millions of years. The idea that they are doing it just to trick us is crazy. There's something they are not telling us, but I'm not sure what. Also, meteors have entered the dome and have been recovered. Have you seen the Red Bull space dive? Holy smokes. I could do a clinic on this person. I'm sure there was a dome. If there was a dome, they wouldn't they wouldn't have allowed it to go ahead interested in your thoughts jamie uh, the fact that he, this person i don't know if jamie's a woman or a man but the fact that jamie's buying into the red bull jump that's pretty much says it all for me it's like look you're gonna it's gonna take you a while to snap out of this this one's called hello there hello mark i'm audrey from new york city i learned the flat Earth was flat in January. I was watching a video with a clip of an airman writing Flat Earth Mark Sargent. Oh, yeah. Well, it actually, it wasn't an airman. That was uh, Sean McCrary. He's a Navy guy, Navy missile instructor. I'm not sure why it took me 
a day to look for you, but looking back, I do remember your voice and teaching style, so I did watch a video of yours. Anyway, I was watching Clue 6, and you made me laugh when you were talking about us drilling. Oh, wait for the life of... Uh, life of... I don't exactly remember what it was you said. Well, now I don't want to know what was funny in Clue 6. But it did make me laugh. Oh, and the mouth-breathing trala... Tra what you call... The, the, the troglodytes made me laugh during class today college art class we have our earphones in you know what I was a big fan of the universe but then I saw something about the landing being a hoax and I was like okay that's cool I kind of knew that already and as kids I'm not I am not 35 why would you say <laughs> I always wondered why didn't the Russia just go after them that's like saying well someone got to the ride before me so I'm just gonna go to get on after them even though I spent money getting to the park. I'm not going to go on after. That's actually pretty good. Yeah, someone goes to the right before me even though I've already spent the, Yeah. Anyway, so I heard that there were people who still believed the Earth is flat and I was like, what? It's 2016, really? But NASA and the pictures. Then I watched some great videos and it took me just one to believe it. 200 proofs the Earth is flat. I believe yours was after that. But after proof 10, I knew. So now what? I don't know. I just look around and look at these people going on with life, not wanting to know the truth. But it's all good. Take brother, take care, brother. Hug for you. Oh, and please send cookies. That was extra funny. <laughs> Thank you, Audrey. That was great. This one's from... I, I, you know, I've got to get in the habit of saying the title first and not saying the name. Because the name on my email system shows up literally right below the title and I want to read it. But I'm not going to because a lot of the times the people will use a different name. They'll use uh, like their husband or wife's account. This one's called Heat from the Sun. Hi, Mark from Submarine Bob. Followed you, following you on the YouTube. Ooh, I think I got to get a hold of this guy. We had a rare heat wave in the UK a while ago. I was having an early morning coffee in the garden and the sun appeared and it felt, I felt the heat from it slowly getting hotter as it got nearer. It got hotter as the sun got nearer then started to cool as it passed over and went on its way. Surely if the sun was millions of miles away, the heat would hit you the second it appeared and stay hot until it went down. But this is not what happens. Just a thought. <laughs> he calls me mucker. I don't know what that is in, in, in Britain. Take care. That's from Bogdan. Thanks, Bogdan. This one's called Yo Ringleader. <laughs> nice. Just want to tell you that I sent to the Phoenix Flat Earth Meetup at Paradise Valley Mall. It was wonderful. I think that went, not sent, went. Uh, thanks for the heads up. And I am a recovering alcoholic. I got sober back in 1985. Yes, that is exactly how the meeting of Flat Earthers felt to me. <laughs> It's true. I've gone to several of them. That's how it feels. 30 years ago, I found fellow humans who understood what it was like to not be able to control their consumption of alcohol and what it would cause us to do. We would never do sober while the rest of the world kept saying, what is wrong with you? Are you insane? Last Saturday, I found fellow humans who could see what I saw while the rest of the world keeps saying, what is wrong with you? Are you insane? That's from Lorelai. And her quote is, you can easily judge the character of a man by how he treats those who can do nothing for him. It's good. I like that. All right, moving on. Trudging through. This one's called Old Conversations with Rob Skiba. Mark, I watched you all, you all's old interview today and y'all spoke of Ascension Movie. Actually, it was a miniseries, six-parter, I believe. Ascension Movie, so I watched it today. There were so many odd, th was it six parts? I think five. Uh, anyway, it's called Ascension. You guys look it up. There were so many odd things going on. I was wondering if you all dissected the episodes. It should and could be done to benefit Flat Earth for sure. Anyway, one thing I noticed was the flag. It had 33 stars and 11 bars. This show is totally brainwashing and Illuminati backed, in my opinion. Y'all are having a great impact in the world and I am thankful for y'all's work. Keep up. Keep it up. God bless. And that's from Buddy. <laughs> of course it is. Anyone that uses the word y'all, what, eight times in one paragraph, his name is going to be Buddy. Of course. This one's called Message Sent to the University of Arizona. Mark, since they made Hubble's Mirror, then spent another bunch of money on the premise that it needed a contact lens. Oh my God, how deep is this rabbit hole, Mark? All right. It's good. Oh, and the answer is very deep. 
This one's called Summarize the Meetups. Mark, okay to read on air if you like. Great show up with number 172 with Patricia. Appreciate your comments and how tactfully you handled controversial subjects. I was wondering if you want to just do a meetup video every week where you summarize and list all the meetups coming up just for the next one. Uh, you would just make a video that covers. And it's a nice idea, but I don't want to, uh, if, I, if I do that, I might, uh, there's a chance that I might mix up the information. And plus the title would, would be too long. There's only so much room you can put on the YouTube title. And I don't want to force people to look at the meetup schedule, just one meetup video to see if there's cities on it. Because right now there's a whole bunch of cities that are doing I don't mind. I don't mind doing multiple meetup videos. I got I got no problem with it. But yeah, like the four you listed here in the first part of July, Niagara Falls, Jacksonville, Florida, Houston, Texas, as in Chicago, Illinois, that's nothing compared to what I've been cranking out lately. We've been doing them all over the place. Anyway, he goes, will be great to list all the sites in one place so your viewers can find one that's closest to themselves and will save you a lot of time. Uh, making one video rather than a half dozen. Take care of Sarge, and that's from Jack Frost. It's a nice idea, Jack, but it's just it, there's too many chances that, that information could be jumbled, so I'm going to stay away from that for now. But thank you. This one's called Hi, Mark. Mark, thank you f thank you for this video. When I first started seeing these videos from others, I thought they were hokey. Is that how you spell hokey? H-O-K-E-Y? I guess it is. I, I hardly use that word. Well, after reading portions of my Bible and researching uh, some of the other conspiracies and discovering that they aren't conspiracies at all, I came away with a completely different point of view. Would you be able to tell me how I can get with other like-minded people in my area to talk more about this? Thank you again, Tim. And if you're listening, Tim, yeah, just pick a city, any city, pick a restaurant. Tell me you're going to be, you know, say you're going to go to Joe's Bar and Grill you know, on Saturday, whatever date it is, at whatever time, six or seven, and I will make you a trailer. Just let me know when it's going to be, and it, it's that easy. People can can create meetups anywhere. This, Flat Earth meetups are easy to do, super easy. You do not have to overkill it like I did last year. I'm not going to overkill it this year, although I think there will be a film team if we ever get that far. This one's called Western Australia Desert Flora Not Able to Produce seen from space type fires. Hi Mark, been mean to send you some pics of that area of inland northwestern Australia. It is mostly sand and two foot high bushes. I am only on my tablet now, so hard to get images together. The bushes are like 30 feet apart mostly. If you go to that area on Google Earth, you can find town names, search for images, or keep zooming down a highway, get on the ground and pan around. I, I, I know what he's talking about. Thanks, Dave. And what he's talking about is everyone knows the blue marble shot. Hopefully, if you haven't up, looked up blue marble earth, you do. There's also one called the black marble series, which is and supposedly it's a compilation of, of images that NASA took at night. But as again, somebody figured it out almost immediately. They were looking on the western part of Australia and they were seeing all these huge population centers because somebody went in like with the cloning tool, what they did with the blue marble shot, and instead of clouds, they cloned in cities in the western part of Australia where there are no cities in western Australia. I mean, they, they, they were talking, they were showing these major population areas and one was in a, in a national park and it was impossible. And then be, the people went back to NASA and said, uh, what are you guys doing down there in Australia? You're making it look like the eastern seaboard. And that's says, oh, there were, there were brush fires down there when, when we did it. That's what the guy was referring to. It was like, look, the bushes are 30, 30 feet apart, and they would never generate that much light. And you're telling me that, that they covered the entire western part of Australia, to where, and they looked exactly like the cities on the, the, on the eastern coast of Australia? Come on. Come on. Give us a little credit here. This one's called Survival Guide. Hey, Mark, we spoke in the phone last summer as I randomly left you a voicemail regarding my research of Flat Earth here in Kansas City. Been meaning to keep and keep forgetting to ask you to send me a copy of your survival guide. Keep up the good work and I appreciate you and your work. Respectfully, Chris. Hopefully I sent you a survival guide, Chris. And if anyone wants a free one, it's only two megs. And it's a little PDF format. It's called Empty Shelves. I wrote it after the whole Katrina thing because nobody prepped even after Katrina came in and wiped out New Orleans. Uh, you can email me msargent23, M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T-23 at comcast.net. All you have to do is put in the title, I want survival guide or survival guide or, you know, whatever. If you don't send me a survival guide, you can go to hell. Whatever it is, I don't care. I will send you the survival guide. I'll just respond and say thank you. This one's called 
Species 8472 are Flat Earthers. That's an original title for an email. Mark, do you remember in Star Trek Voyager the species that were more powerful than the Borg named Species 8472? Yes, I do. Well, I think Species, species 8472 is symbolic of a flat earther. Let me explain. First of all, the Borg is obviously representative of where mankind is headed in our global transhumanistic mind-controlled beast matrix. Species 8472 is the Borg's most ruthless enemy and represents a flat earther in that they are immune to the assimilation attempts by the Borg the same way a flat earther is resistant to the psyop and false flag lies of the beast matrix once he realizes the world is flat. Not only that, but Species 8472 is able to combine forces and destroy entire planets just like the flat earthers are destroying globes every day. In addition, 8472 has superior bio-based technology akin to a flat earther using the natural biology of plants and the Gerson, Gerson method to combat diseases that no beast matrix technology will ever reach. 8472 has psychic and telepathic abilities that remind us of the unfluoridated pineal gland, pineal? Pineal gland of a flat earther. And lastly, the number one reason that 8472 represents a flat earther is because the space that 8472 lives in is actually fluidic space, which researchers like Crow 777 say is probably a more accurate description of what we call space. And that's from David Romero. Thanks, David. Awesome. Okay, this one's called Looking for a Video. Hello, Mark. Actually, it says Halo, H A L O O. I've just watched your Flat Earth Clues documentary and must commend you on the great work you've been doing. Actually, when I found you, I had been looking for a documentary I've seen around since 2015 that was talking about the flight plans and had a smaller clip of Admiral Byrd than the one you have on your documentary. I'm writing this because I am hoping that as you gathered your material, you came across the documentary of the flight plans. He does talk a bit about pilots and how you would think they know the Earth's shape at the beginning. My memory is hazy though because it's been a while since I've seen it. I've been trying to locate it again but it was the first video that changed my outlook on the shape of the earth and I'd like to show it to someone but I cannot remember its name or the form I got it from. I've been looking on YouTube for days but there's so many other videos now and yours was the closest so I'm hoping you've seen the video in question. If you have could you please give me its name or its link on YouTube I would be forever grateful. I am so sorry to bother you, but I have exhausted all avenues. Thank you for your time, though, and look forward to hearing from you. Sincerely, Purity. Um, if anyone knows what Purity is talking about, I know it's a little late in the afternoon and I'm, I'm a little tired, but I don't I don't know what she's talking about here. I don't, I don't know that documentary. Or maybe I do, maybe the, the title's different. So if anyone knows it, please shoot me an email. This one is called Flat Earth Model. Hello, Mr. Mark. I would like to buy a Flat Earth Model. Can you please send me more details? Thank you. Best regards, Richard. And yes, Richard, I actually sent a... Um, I sent a uh, an email to Richard about the... He's talking about the Chris Pontius models. So you can... All you have to do is go into YouTube and type in Flat Earth Model or Flat Earth Chris Pontius and you'll see the, all the information. If you want to buy a, a full-blown uh, flat earth model the big ones that you want the little ones you can go to our flat earth.com those little ones in fact I just put out a trailer for that this morning this one's called clues hi mark just want to say thanks for your flat earth clues I've been convinced for some time now along with my wife Jean we're Christians and this truth dispels the false Copernicus theory which takes God out of the picture we're Scottish and live in Derbyshire England God bless Brian and Jean God bless you, Brian and Jean. This one's called... I'm still in June. I might make it out of June, though. Before this sucker, before we wrap up. This one's called Hey Hey. Literally, the title's called Hey Hey. Hey, Mark. Hope you're well. Thought I would drop you a line. I've been on Odd TV's live chat for two straight weeks. This stuff is fun. Do you ever come out onto these chats? Not very often. I'm, I'm too busy scouring the uh, all the media to see what I can find in ter terms of Flat Earth. Was thinking about that interview you did regarding how would you convince a blind person that the Earth was flat? Sim one, simply standing still for five seconds, let me know it's stationary and by default, it can't be a spinning ball. Two, you can describe to a blind person that liquids always find level, thus deductive reasoning together with fluid dynamics derive that the oceans have to be level. And 
here you and you what's crazy all i need is two pieces of information together to know that it's a stationary plane because once i know it's not moving then by default it can't be on a ball and has to be level based on properties of fluids no eyes needed have a good fourth of july sir mike in minnesota thank you mike it's great again sorry it's taking me so long holy smokes this is the last email of june Ugh, takes so long. Okay. this one's called southern star rotation hey mark first would just would like to ask you that to ask that you avoid mentioning my email address if you read this email on your show okay which i thoroughly enjoy on tfr i'm a public high school math teacher who is almost scheduled to teach physics in the fall, which is hilarious. Administration surely wouldn't think so, because I entertain Flat Earth. i followed the truth community for decades now, and I'm a Bible-believing Christian. I find a lot of the Flat Earth arguments to be pretty compelling. No longer trust NASA at all, nor any proclamations from scientific officialdom. The best objections I've heard to Flat Earth are the Sydney-Santiago flights, which I feel can be can somewhat reason into a flat earth model and the rotation of the stars in the southern pole i was wondering where you where, where you were on the southern hemisphere star rotation how you deal with it the best idea i've seen advanced for the was the mirror ball disco ball explanation which i feel needs to be developed more just wanted to hear your thoughts i hope this is true on one level i'd find it hilarious on another level it just makes me realize how evil this world is i love your work keep it up josh and yeah when the the southern star trails i've got no problem with it because i use an enclosed system model and which means multiple instancing multiple multiple projection system you can get all the stars up there but at the equator you project the southern stars it's not that hard again if we had a planetarium big enough we could do it we do it in software we do it in software all the time now anything in the sky is possible everything in the sky is possible as long as it's enclosed if it's not enclosed a little trickier you're gonna have to dance around a little more this one's called do, do, do. Himawari time lapse from five gigabyte zip file mark here's the link to the FP FTP of exactly where I got the images. I did nothing to the perimeter as stated. If you download one of the zip files and zoom in on the perimeter of one of the images, you can clearly tell you're looking through a square window. All I did was download the zip files that contain 142 images and compiled them in order to make them into a movie. You clearly tell it is in order as the clouds move in a fluid motion with no hiccups. Secondly, the hotspot is below the imaging device with no light obscuring the camera. If the sun were behind the camera, how about that Terminator line? Odd shape, huh? Almost like an S. Looking forward to hearing back from you. I've made videos of all three zip files. Let me know if you want those as well. And you guys can you guys can download these as uh, well on your own. You can go to ftp.nnvl.noaa.gov slash pub slash A M as in Mike, N as in Nancy, H as in hot potatoes. Ah, see what I did there? download those and see what you guys find i mean it's it's good do i think it's a silver bullet eh, no but it's good I, I like and i like the time you spent and and that was great this one is called it's flat mark you may read this on air i would like to get your mailing address so i can send you a couple of t-shirts that i have designed in the past couple of years as you know i live in the u.s virgin islands one of my many jobs is to organize our island's largest foot race since february after getting on board with the flat earth idea late in 2015 it was time for me to design the front of the t-shirt for the upcoming 2016 race i went with a un map minus the wreath with an arrow pointing at the virgin Islands, saying you are here long story short we printed 1200 ent entry tees and 300 volunteer tees Here's the best part of the story. There's 1,500 people walking around with the Flat Earth t-shirt on, and they don't know it. The next design for 2018 is going to be the tortoise and the hare. The 2017 t-shirt was Atlas holding the island of St. John over his head. Please reply with your t-shirt size and your mailing address so I can send you a couple of tees. And yeah, he sent me the tees. This is the guy with the It's Flat Virgin Islands license plate. I didn't know that the Virgin Islands had their own license plate. Why wouldn't they, right? And they're great t-shirts. Thank you much, much for doing that. Very sneaky that you got those in there for everybody that was they were going to be running the race. Fantastic. And if anyone needs my mailing address, if you want to send me something, I think it's on all the videos, but if you can't find it, send me an email and I'll send it to you. And no matter where I am, those packages will reach me. 
Okay, we have time for, I think, two more. This one's called Flat Earther from Maui. Hi, my name is Tony. I'm originally from Seattle, Washington. I now live in Hawaii. I have recently started watching your YouTube channel, and I am convinced, without a doubt, that the Earth is flat. My problem is, is what do I do at this point? I mean, I want to help in any way. I thought about disliking all Globe Earthers videos, but that's not going to help. I thought about making my own videos, but there's thousands, maybe more, so I don't, I'm not going to make a, much of a difference. So I need to get this out somehow without being called dumb or stupid. I know that when I first heard it, I was thinking, now that is just so stupid. But it would not leave me alone. I, it kept nagging almost as if my subconscious knew that it was the truth. I knew NASA faked the moon landing, but this flat earth puts everything together. So what should I do to help? Please let me know. And maybe you should take, make a video on YouTube about what new flat earthers should take part in the movement. Mahalo and aloha. Tony. And yeah, Tony, it's it's getting the word out there in whatever method works for you. If you like street street activism, go on the street. Yeah, you're going to run into some, you know, some people that, that give you crap, but if that's what you're built for, that's what you're built for. Making YouTube videos is not a bad thing. Everybody starts uh, starts out in the YouTube community with zero subscribers and no views, including me. So, making YouTube videos Look at what other people have done and see if you're comfortable with that. Um, starting a blog, starting a Facebook group. There's all sorts of different things. Joining Hangouts, going into chat and, and conversing with others, networking. That's always that's always key. That's that's what I would start. You know, getting the word out there. That's that's the most important thing. Oh, can I read this one or is this one too long? Nope. Well, let's end on this one. Okay. This one's called "Please Read on Show: Unexplained Moonlight Possibility." Mark, just throwing this out and see what sticks. I have yet to hear this one. One day the sun and the moon were both out. I could see the moon partially visible as if the visible area could be reflecting sun. Later that night, it appeared that the same area that was showing in the day was in the area that was glowing. So maybe the moonlight is sunlight, but indirect. Maybe it's similar to how glow-in-the-dark objects work. They need to be under, under light for them to glow in the dark. Maybe the craters act as a light collection mechanism. And then at night, maybe work in reverse. Maybe like how satellite dishes work. If you look at... At a pick of a full moon at night, it does appear that the center of the craters are brighter. Just a thought. Let's see what happens. Buzz, buzz. <laughs> totally ended on this one. He actually ended it with buzz, buzz. Thanks for all you do. Sean Welch. He's a computer programmer. Thank you, Sean. And yeah, maybe. Nothing's off limits. I mean, once you get into flat earth, once you truly embrace flat earth, nothing is condemnable. Uh, I, I don't... To look at anything and say it's stupid. Now, there may be some things like, oh, I'm not a big fan of, like Elvis and Bigfoot having a baby, perhaps. But the rest of it, who am I to judge? I do flat earth 24 7. And so far, seems to be going okay. All right. Uh, anyone wants to email next time? I got through quite a few of them today. I'll try to do it more often if I can. Uh, no promises, though, because I'm going to be doing the Atlanta thing next week. I'm going to be visiting the Zen Garcia debate where he's going against uh, Dr. Stephen Pigeon. So, but if you want to email me your stuff, uh, just send it to M as in Mark, S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at Comcast.net. It's the only email I really read. If you find any other emails, they're generally not me. And until next time, guys, stay flat. <laughs>